teaching at this institution, I have never been so inspired by the level of engagement and activism that I've seen today. You demand that they support AB 656 to tax big oil, not people. The greatest power you have is the power of your vote in November. Thank you. When I was coming into my class, I had to play paper, scissors, write to somebody whoever won was going to get that seat in the class. Do y'all think it's a fair? I do not vote for rec center. I do not want a rec center. I want classes. I want teachers in those classes. You see, both the held the meeting, and from this meeting, uh, sprung out this day, March 4th, and since then it spread throughout the United States. 32 other states are also having a day of action today. It's ridiculous how much tuition just keeps on going up and up and up. I mean, we're the only state who doesn't tax our oil companies. Like, all that money can go towards our education. I really wish people at CSUN would care more about our education. Because the people up in Sacramento know that we don't, and because we don't, they're going to keep raising it up. We're from Cal State Channel Islands, and we're representing where students that are attending there. And we're, we came to this march for, you know, no, no more budget cuts. <laughs> Well, let's see, uh, they make us pay more, then they, they take some of our classes off with some furloughs, but not only that, but they also increase the number of students in the class. We're paying more, we're giving more, but we're getting less. What's EOP? EOP? It's Educational Opportunity Programs. And what are they? <laughs> help support people from low-income families and first-generation college students get into college. <laughs> and have these people been uh, affected by the cuts? Of course they have because um, because of the cuts of the budget, the program's not being allowed to let as many students in and give them a second chance that they need. You know, I want to get an education because my family wants me to have a better future. My family, my, my father's a roofer. He works so much to make to put me where I'm at right now and he's always told me that he wants me to he wants my future to be happy he doesn't want me working on the roof just like he is sitting in the, in the classrooms or sitting at home you know it's not going to make as much difference as, as walking in the streets and, and making our voices heard power concedes nothing without a demand exactly. this is the first step in this giant movement of students teachers and faculty of higher public education in California not even just higher public public education letting the people of Sacramento and the powers that be know that we will not stand for these budget cuts. This is hindering our future, and we can't have one if all this continues, having to keep paying hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more every semester for less days of class. It's just not going to work out for anyone. The budget cuts not only impact education, they also impact social services, health care, and all the things that were the budget cut. The budgets are not really serving right now. Fueling up for the next phase. Yep. Oh, yeah. The budget cuts. I've had a hard time getting classes, and I'm actually becoming a teacher. So I want. Um, I really want to fight for this. And also, my sister is a teacher, and she hasn't been a teacher for too long. So it's, she has pretty good chances of getting cut. So I don't. She's know. a public school teacher in yes. LA. Yes. Yes. And she didn't get cut the last time. No, she got lucky. But she might get so, cut the next time. Yeah, it's still it's very scary. Um, she she came here, worked very hard to get her job, and she got her job. And as soon as she gets her job, all these cuts started. So it's really bad. You know, she has a family, and you know, I want to fight for her and for me as well. I want my education too. I'm doing an independent study project, and it didn't get approved because of the budget cuts. I have been in education all of my life. <clears throat> I'm really outraged at what's happening now. My daughter is trying to get a teaching credential, and it's so discouraging because there's nobody hiring new teachers. I mean, teachers who've got seniority are being laid off. Classes are getting large again after a period of reform. I'm just really heartsick. The halls where it used to be so loved. Who's in the box? Education. Education. Education's in the box. It got taken from us and now it's dead. So we're trying to pay our respects.
allergic cut have affected me. Um, if it wasn't for financial aid, first of all, actually, I wouldn't be here. And fortunately, I still get some financial aid, but I do have to take out some loans so that I can be here. And because jobs have been cut, it's really hard for me to find employment also, like a small part-time job, like no one's hiring. And my mom also goes to school, so she's also affected by this. There are a lot of students out here right now who just discovered they are a lot more powerful than they thought they were. And the marchers keep coming. As far as I can see, they just keep coming. Who would have imagined on such a sleepy suburban campus like CSUN that the sleeping giant could be awakened? Hey, how are you? How are you? Good, good to see you. It's been a long time. Everything good? Everything's great. Yeah. What do you think? This is amazing. Well, I'm loving it. And uh, what brings you out today? Well, I'm here to support our education. My daughter's uh, classes have been cut at CSUN. My friends are losing jobs at their schools that they work at. And we just can't stand for it anymore. When's the last time you ever saw something like this here? Actually, never. So this is the first for me. <laughs> something this big. And you think it would make a difference? Yes, I do. Because it's happening all across the state. We stand here today in a day I never thought would come to pass, which is we're watching the dismantling of public education in our state, and it's a crime. Right now at my school, you know, we have uh, just enough textbooks for each kid. Well, what happens when you get a new kid, like I did this week? I don't have a book for them, and they have to put it on back order, and there's no money for it. It's a freeze. I mean, it's ridiculous. Textbooks. Every kid should have a textbook. And there have been thousands of job losses across and the district. And thousands of job losses, which is ridiculous. Let's start at the top and start chopping all those people. Yeah, the superintendent of the district wants to cut five days out of the school year to save money. I say cut the superintendent's salary. That'll save boatloads. The statistics burning in my head. 48% black and 33% Latino high school dropout rates. I demand to know why the cutbacks on the teachers and classes and not the police. It seems to me that the teachers that teach our future leaders and change our lives are thrown away. And the perpetrators and incarcerators seem to go unaffected day by day. They see the color of my skin and expect me to fall down at some point. To save public parts and open them up Monday through Friday so the children could use them. California ranks 46th in the nation on what we spend on education. Corporations and oil companies should not be getting tax breaks. In these tough economic times, everyone must be paying their fair share. When I was actually in class and I was 
deciding whether or not to walk out. And my philosophy professor was like, oh, this is gonna pass. And I keep I kept hearing the students banging on the door. It's like, walk out, wake up, walk out, wake up. And I saw walk out all over the boards. And I, um, I was like, should I walk out, should I not walk out? In my mind, I was like, I don't know what I should do. Like, I, I feel like I should walk out. And I've, I've hated, it was like the second time I felt like I was gonna be like, I can't do it. I can't walk out because I have to do this. Even though it's just as important. And so when I had the courage, I was like, you know what, forget this. I started packing up my stuff. And I was like, I'm walking out. I was like, walk out. And I walked out of class. And everybody just like looked at me like, are you crazy? Nobody else got up to go? I don't, I didn't, I didn't look back. I was too afraid to even look at my person. Why are all these like important teachers and counselors that we need are being cut back? And the more we saw this, the, and every time I looked at TV, oh, join the police department, the LAPD. And I was like, why is that? Why are they hiring? Are, are they cutting back? Like, why are they, why is there, why are they promoting more, more, more police? And they're cutting back on education system. They're cutting back on all the jobs. And I was just like, because when you cut back on the education system, then you need more police. Exactly. When add more counselors, add add more to the education, add to the youth programs, add to the at risk gang at risk youth programs that I was in when I was younger. That's the only reason.